This video demo is to give you an overview of the kind of resources that you can use um, through the library to help you with your research for your projects um, and also for your academic essays. Very often people use go online to search for their resources and a little bit using books also. What I really want to do is just to give you an idea about how you might get more targeted searches to help you in what you are trying to achieve in your essays or in your projects. So just before I start, it's just to give you an idea, just to quickly touch on what kind of resources you should be using. So things like books, um, which you can get through the library. I'll do a search on that and I'll show you how to use that. Um, but also things like um, academic journals, There's some really useful um, articles there for your projects that you can um, use to support your work. And I'm going to give a little brief demo on that also. You can use things like DVDs, um, images, obviously online. You'll be using those quite a lot as well. And um, really just to, to bear in mind that you have to keep track of your information as you go because you can't be using research and you can't be using images without attributing it to the person who created it. It's extremely important that you do do that for your own selves to retrace your steps, but also um, to avoid plagiarism, uh, which means to attribute uh, the ideas to the person who has actually designed that image or, 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 or come up with that thought or creative uh, concept. So every source that you use at all in the completion of your work, just note it down. Note it down. It'll come easier over time and over the years as you're studying, you'll be able to get it down uh, very well to the Harvard referencing style, but just take a note of everything, okay? It's really important just to get that across to you. It's not like some aside, aside from the fact it stops you getting caught for plagiarism, but it's also distinguishes your work from other people's work. Um, it just shows the amount of effort and the connections that you've made um, and the time and energy that you're putting into doing your referencing, your, your research. So it really is in your own interest to uh, keep track of everything. So you can go back over it and so that the person who's marking your work is able to find what it is that you, research, that you referenced, okay? So just take a note of everything as you go and you'll be fine. I just want to quickly look at books. Okay, we're going to look at books and I'm going to show you how to do academic articles um, on the databases in the library as well. Um, I'm going to do a little uh, demonstration search here now in a minute, but just to say that um, on the PowerPoint slides, this will actually link you to the library page. There's a lot of different searches that you can use. Um, I'll just do one as an example, but depending on what you're doing, you're not necessarily going to find the books on the shelves where you expect to find them. We have them. We have them numbered, okay? So if you see down here, it's 749.32. And that's up to us to really work out why we do that. If you use a database, you'll find out what the shelf number is and you know where to find it on the shelf. Uh, if you have difficulty in finding it, which you then, we let you know, we'll give you a hand um, from the library issue desk as well, okay? So every book has its own unique number here. Here's the shelf number, and it's just the first three letters of the author's name there. Okay, so I'll just do a quick demo of how you might do a search on the library catalogue. So there is a link on the library Moodle page to the catalogue, um, but you can just type it into your address bar up at the top. But if you do that, it might be an idea just to bookmark the page because then you'll have it to go back to later. It's going to show my bookmark. There it is. You'll have it again whenever you want. OK, any time you go in and use a database of any sort, just go to the advanced search. Always go to the advanced search, okay? Because we're not on Google. We want to be using this kind of information that's sort of hidden behind here that'll help you find. You're dealing uh, with keywords and subject searches. So keep it really, really simple. So I'm going to put in chair. I'm going to put in furniture. And sustainable. Okay, here's a couple here. All right. You could design the source book. Or just chair. Just throw it in and see what happens. Okay, okay so there's 39 here. That look, you can probably look through there. But you'll notice they're not necessarily, they're similar numbers, but they're not exactly where you would expect to find them. 749.32 generally. But here's another one here at 747. So you'd miss that if you didn't use the catalogue. Okay. 
I'm just going to go in and look at a record here. Okay, so this is what you take note of to put in your notebook or your assignment. Okay, there's the title. You always need an author. There's a publisher. This is a book. So New York is where it was uh, published and Norton's the place. And there's the year. So that's all the information you need essentially. Okay, so you can just copy that information. You put it in here. It just makes it just normal text you can copy that and paste it into your word document so essentially that's that's the information there okay and um, sorry tidy it up do remember that if you're referring to a particular page you do need to um, take a note of the page number so if it's a quote or an image on a particular page you make sure you keep track of the page number at the start just take a note of it down in your notebook just do it as you go Okay, so as I say, you can just use any of these search terms. Just, these are just examples. You can use any combination of them. Um, we have beautiful books on with phot photographs of nature, just if you're looking for color schemes, really fabulous stuff. Um, look at the photography section as well, the fashion department. Um, all of these things can be source of inspiration to you. The next thing I just want to touch on now is, I want to talk about researching online very often people are looking online and you just Google, put something into Google and you could come back with anything. And um, there's two things. One, you, uh, it's basically Google isn't there designed to help you. Okay. It's just a search engine to, um, where every site, every page is waiting to be heard the loudest, just trying to get your attention. It's not really going to, you're not going to find the best thing for you. And you're certainly not going to find things that are of a standard that you need to be developing um, throughout your studies. So start as you mean to go on and it'll make your research more interesting to you as well if you use the college supports, okay? Um, and then the other thing is, is that you might just be looking at images in general, much more difficult to reference them, much more difficult to keep a track of how you found those or who, which is really important. You really always need to say who came up with that image. It could be the photographer, it could be the designer, it could be the architect, whatever it is. If you have any doubt, you can ask in the library for a hand on that, okay? So what I want to do is, is I want to look at using the um, online databases on Moodle because they are designed to help you um, and there's it really really quickly you can um, get a nice search uh, together for yourself and um, so I'm just going to demonstrate a couple of these now and hopefully they'll, they'll make sense to you. So you access the databases through the library pages you're on your Moodle page if you go into useful links and come down to library now we can go into databases and online resources here okay some very nice information here okay the two ones i'm going to talk about really i, I encourage you to look at at the moment is ebsco um, and sage also and um, but they all have something to offer i'm going to show you the shortcut into this though okay because when you're starting off it's kind of a good way of, of getting into it and getting used to things so i'm on the first page in the library do you see this ebsco search here okay I'm just going to click on this search bar here. I could type something in here, but look, remember I said I wanted to get into the advanced searches. I'm going to click on it there. We're going to come up with 12 million plus, far too many things, straight into your advanced search. Remember that, advanced search. So I'm just going to build up something fairly quickly here. Okay, so it's coming up. I type it in. There's some keywords showing up here. With chair design. So there we go. So we know we're onto something here, chair design. 4,478, far too many. There's a couple of things I can do here, okay? Um, first thing I'm going to tick is the scholarly peer reviewed, because do you remember I was saying we want academic sources? So this gets rid of trade magazines and things like that, um, or ads or editorials. The next thing you do is date. Now, older things could be interesting, but look, we're just going to go for the last five years, would be the rule of thumb. If something is still of interest, People will be citing it in their work now. Okay, so we're quickly down to 498. So from 12 million down to 400, that's pretty good. There's two other things I'd say. If I click on subject here, I could click in here. Do the show more so you can see everything. I'm just going to give you some clues. You could narrow those 400 down. So posture, ergonomics could be interesting. I would imagine that could be good. Experimental design, possibly you could check that out. So that would be a good way of, of um, narrowing it down. The other thing though I might do is, is I might just build up another comment in here. So I might put ergonomics in. 
Just leave it as ergonomics. We, do, we don't want to, the thing is you do, a, you, you don't narrow things down too much at first. So 49, okay. I'll do, it, I'll, do quite, I'll do a different one again here now. Let's just look at furniture more general. Furniture design. Okay, furniture design materials. What do we have here? We have 22. Now we're still doing the peer review, just what you want. Um, and the full text also, because we want to be able to read the whole thing. Still got the dates there, that's great. Okay, 22. If you click into there as well, you can see that there are some other subject terms that you might um, think about. It just shows you that there's always kind of one and two word keyword searches that can be helpful to keep in mind. So depending on your topic or what you're concentrating on in a particular project, so you could put ergonomics if that's what you're looking at, furniture. Okay, here's a few as well. So I have got to have ergonomic furniture made of wood, renewable forests. Let's have a look. Might be worth a go. Okay, so just have a little look at the abstract first and see is it of interest to you. And um, with regard to you keeping a track of what this is, um, you'll be able to find the citation within it. Or the, one of the other handy things about looking in these databases are is you get a nice citation for it. So get used to using your citations now. Okay, so if I click on that little thing there, it just shows me different ways I can do it. This is the closest ones to ours, references. So do you just copy it? Whoops. Just copy and paste it. Hit select it. Right click, copy, and just paste it into your Word document. You'll notice it says things like available at. Okay, so that's the address. Where you'll find it and um, that'll do that'll do for now okay you don't really need that really for us and um, but it might be it might be useful your lecturers may want that just ask them if they want that and um, it also says in the access date is and um, that'll become more important uh, for you with your more written essays it basically says that this is what i read on this website at this time so uh if anything changes later <laughs> you can just still say on the day that i looked at it this is what was there so that's all that means So just, you know, just consider, you can look back at this video just to remind yourself of how I did those searches. Um, this is where you find the articles. Um, if you go to the library page, you can go to the databases here, or you can do that little quick link to the EBSCO one on the front page. This is what we did, okay? We looked at the steps for conducting a targeted search. So you go to the online databases there. Remember, we use the advanced search. There's no perfect search. There are a few different combinations. And it, and it becomes easier over time as well. So one or two simple keywords. Okay, now then the other thing is you hopefully will get a lot of results. Peer review, you can take that box, you narrow the date, and you might look at the subject, or you might add in another search term as well, and one of the other little fields um, in the searches, in the advanced search. On this PowerPoint slide, I have embedded links to this. So if you just click on that there, that'll bring you to the databases there, to the library page. If you click on this here, that'll bring you to the library database as well. Always remember, take a note of your research as you go. So what you need is your author. Um, it could be the creator, it could be designer, uh, the name of the architect, whatever it might be. You need to know what year it is. Um, if it's a book, you want the publisher details. Um, page numbers if you add it on a page and a web address if you found it online okay you need to have it so that anyone reading your work should be able to locate that resource you know sometimes people feel like they don't you know it's 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 the end thing that they want to show but really there's marks going for all the research and all the connections that you've made uh, and you should be proud to show off your work so really do keep track of those things um, and st I start to actually enjoy the research side of it if you need a hand with any of that the library uh, staff we're here, we're here to give you a hand on that as you go further you will be expected to do the Harvard referencing style so I just have a link for it there so you can just click on that it'll bring you to the full referencing guide um, this is the kind of thing to remember okay if you're doing an image okay for the moment in your notebooks if it's an image who may took the image was it the photographer was it the designer or the architect okay when was it taken what is it called 
where can it be found again okay so there's a little example there so if you're not sure this will come in time okay you will learn how to do the citations as you come along live is here to help you as i say we've loads of resources for that but the main thing with anything when you are studying um it is the research that's the important thing you really want to keep a track of things if you keep a track of things it's all good for you it's all good for the person marking you you're giving them an opportunity to give you those extra marks there you be mindful about it um, and as time goes on and as you leave college and you're in the workplace those skills are going to be invaluable to you so build on them from now um, if you need any help at all you remember you can ask us for for guidance on it that's what we're here for and uh, just come up to the library top floor arthur griffith building okay so i hope this is helpful as i say it's just an overview just to kind of get you started to hopefully get you a little bit interested um, in some of the resources that are there for you.